Hello everyone, how are you doing? <laughs> Hi uh, Michael, we got two Michaels in, uh, first in today, <laughs> uh, Michael in the UK and Michael in uh, the US uh, and uh, also Neil. Hi Neil, great to see you here as well. Uh, hi Michael. So um, yeah, what I thought I'd do today was um, obviously going to give my update on my usual uh, sort of stats, my progress towards my 365 videos in a year, um, but then also talk about basically some of the uh, what's going to be coming out in the new version of Ecamm Live because we already know what it is because we've obviously already had uh, all of the, uh, the the betas or betas whichever way you want to say it um, that have come out and there's been four of them and I just suddenly realized yesterday or the day before when I was sort of playing around with the uh, the, the latest beta um, that uh, there's just been so much and because we've sort of had them incrementally if you've been using the uh, the, the beta then um, yeah it's it's sort of like a an incremental up update but each one of them was massive in itself and so when I sort of put together all of the uh, the new features uh, it just kind of blew me away and I thought anybody who who hasn't been on that uh, that the, the beta program basically is just going to go from where they were you know <laughs> with the, the last version to suddenly jump ahead to all of these massive new features so uh, I thought it'd be quite interesting to just go through uh, and have a look at all of them and sort of put them all together because I think that it's, it's actually a total game changer in terms of the way that we are going to be using Ecamm Live and certainly things like you know the ways that we would do overlays like this sort of overlay that I've got here these um, sort of graphical overlays uh, we've most people are probably not going to need those at all going forward and uh, it's just a case of how you want to now do far more advanced things like linking it in with Keynote and stuff like that which is basically what my uh, recent videos have been all about. So uh, I'll start with my update but first of all I've just got to say hi James, <laughs> great to see you here. Uh, I've got to watch your new show by the way, I saw it come up on my little feed so uh, I'm really interested to, uh, to, to watch that one, I'll, uh, I'll give that a look later today. Uh, but I'll do my usual uh, my usual update so we're on uh, day 134 and uh, I've actually put out seven videos this week in the seven days um, but I was behind last week so I'm still slightly behind. <laughs> uh, hi again Michael yeah the thing if I got your comment actually your first one but I only get the ones in Ecamm from uh, when I started the stream so but nice to see you here again as always. Uh, so my uh, the videos 130 videos this was actually the uh, the sort of uh, I don't want to say the best week, but I've had the the most new subscribers this week compared to any other week. So usually it's between twenty and thirty new subscribers, but this week there was a jump of about forty or something. I think I was on four hundred eight at the at the end of uh, the, sort of my live stream last week. So uh, it's like thirty uh, thirty six, isn't it? Um, and then uh, I could actually just put up some stats here as well because. Uh, usually, my uh, the last couple of weeks, my sort of watch hours has been jumping up by basically 200 watch hours every week. Whereas previously, it was like a uh, 100 watch hours a week that it was going up by. Whereas now, it's it's gone up by 200 watch hours uh, this week and last week. Uh, hi, Alicio, great to see you here as well. <laughs> and then uh, my views has gone up by uh, 2,000 views this week and last week as well. But there was a, a distinct spike, which is also something that sort of prompted me to do uh, this this topic for the live stream being the, uh... <laughs> oh, it's gone up. Well, I checked it. I checked it an hour ago. So I've got another two in the last hour. <laughs> uh, thanks, Michael. Um, so yeah, the uh, if I just pop up these stats one second. Uh, now, where did I put them? Uh, is it that one? This is dangerous isn't it <laughs> oh there it is yeah, yeah there we go uh, oh and I've moved everything on the screen of course I have <laughs> these were the uh, the graphs that I just wanted to uh, to pull in uh, and in fact let me just adjust this since Ecamm Live makes it so easy to adjust these things let me just crop in this a little bit and bring this up like this uh, so basically the 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 video that I did all about the Ecamm Live uh, beta beta <laughs> I'm going to stick to beta because I think most people watching use beta <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah there was this distinct sort of spike up uh, last uh, in the last couple of days basically around the time that uh, I released that uh, that sort of beta video so uh, yeah you can see it's quite a distinct uh, leap up compared to uh, to, to compared to where I have been and in fact it's the highest uh, day in terms of number of views so uh, it so, sort of surprised me that has to be honest because up until uh, then my sort of highest uh, number of views on videos always came from things like Stream Deck or things like that that were more sort of mainstream whereas obviously a beta version of Ecamm Live is a little bit more niche than that really isn't it so it has surprised me a little bit that I've got those uh, uh, those um, 
uh, that number of views over the past uh, couple of days. Uh, and then also the watch time as well. You can see that correlates obviously with the uh, the spike. But it does just show that uh, most of my viewers are very keen to uh, learn about the uh, the beta. So uh, there is uh, there is that. But yeah, it's um, it's just interesting really to see uh, to see how this sort of changes over time. Uh, but like I say, I don't really I don't really care about the stats, but I do care about them if that makes sense. I don't lose sleep over them, but it's just interesting to uh, to see. So that is where I am with the uh, the current progress. I've got a whole. I'll, I'll probably catch up with my uh, number of videos. So by next live stream, I will be on top of them because I've got so many to put out in the next uh, in the next week. Um, so I'll probably be doing two a day on a couple of days. I don't really care that that's not necessarily the best way to do it in terms of views. I'm sure it's probably better to do like one a day at a specific time. But I'm just all about let's just get it out there. If people are going to find it useful, <laughs> so I'm not I'm not trying to optimize too much at this stage on uh, release time and stuff like that. So there will definitely be two a day uh, coming out because I've done two videos all about the uh, green screen screen sharing feature which I'll talk about in a moment um, and uh, I've got another three to do that are all about that so and they were quite long videos you know they were like 20 30 minutes something like that so by the time I've done the other three it will be like about two and a half three hours of, uh, of content just about the green screen feature of the beta in uh, in um, uh, screen sharing it's going to totally change the way that I'm uh, I'm using Ecamm, to be honest, with, uh, as I said in the videos, not so much on my channel, but on some of the other stuff that I do with Ecamm, it's uh, it's going to be really help me <laughs> a lot. So uh, I'll come on to all of those features in a moment, but I do just have to talk about my other challenge. And I've just had another week where I have not done anything towards this, which is shocking because it now means this is the great cycle challenge. We're now on day 24. <laughs> so I've got a week left, essentially. Uh, and I've got quite a long ride to do. <laughs> I've got to do around about 40 miles a day, something like that. In fact, just over 40 miles a day it is. So uh, I've got to uh, do a couple of long bike rides <laughs> so that I don't have to do 40 miles every day. Uh, and then I'll do a, a few shorter ones on the other days. But it'll be like at least 20, 30 miles a day that I'm going to be aiming to do over the next week. This last week has just been uh, quite crazy, really, in terms of um, uh, just other stuff that I've had going on. So just not had uh, any chance to uh, to get out but this next week I'll be uh, freed up a little bit more to uh, uh, create a bit of time to get out there <laughs> and do it so uh, this time next week will, will be the sort of final update of the uh, the challenge itself so uh, uh, yeah we'll see it's, it is a real challenge now <laughs> but I do like a challenge so there we go <laughs> so um, uh, just say uh, so say hi to Matt obviously hi Matt and uh, oh hi Greg didn't see you uh, sneak in there as well <laughs> uh, Oh, thank you, Michael. Yeah, well, it's it, it's not so much, it's not it's not me. It's the fact that the beta is so good. <laughs> it's it's just got so many features, and there's and I know that some of these are just like triggers for people that they want to know about you know certain parts of it. I know there was some for me that I'd certainly put in feature requests for, but then also I I just wanted for so long. So uh, it's definitely uh, it's, it's just a it's just a game changer. In fact, <laughs> I, I think with that, let me just see. There was something else I was going to mention before I got into that, and I. Uh, I can't remember what it was now. Uh, no, I can't. Oh, I'll tell you what else happened this week. I had a conversation with uh, Sylvia and Andrew Nixon from Press and So. So uh, there will be some uh, T-shirts and hats coming soon <laughs> to a store near you. But I just wanted to say, the reason I wanted to mention that is whenever people talk about, you know, merchandising and stuff like that in the uh, in the group, everyone always mentions uh, Press and So and Sylvia and Andrew and they say, oh, that's the only only option. You've only got to go to them. It's like, oh, they, they're amazing. So I went in with pretty high expectations, to be honest. And you know what? They absolutely blew me away. <laughs> it was, they totally wowed me, even though I was going in with high expectations. So um, yeah, I've got some stuff to prepare for them over the weekend to get them over some, uh, some, some stuff that they need from my side. But uh, they just ah, such lovely people and such a great service and so uh, yeah it's uh, I highly recommend having a chat with them if you need anything like that so uh, so yeah let's have a little look shall we at uh, what I wanted to cover which was <laughs> of course I use some of the features the Ecamm Live version 3.9 because that's what we're talking about essentially although all of these uh, features that I'm talking about have been released in the, the beta as I said before it's kind of like these are all just going to hit all these users who have never used any of them before and they're going to get them all in one update if they've not been on the the beta <laughs> uh, 
Uh, and Neil, I don't, uh, I don't know exactly when it's going to be released. What they did say when they uh, made the announcement of this one is that they think that this is the uh, the sort of the final version. So obviously the point of a beta is for testing so that we can test and see uh, see if there's any issues or anything like that with it so um so that's that's sort of ongoing at the moment but then as far as i'm aware that's kind of uh, uh oh sorry it is 3.9 <laughs> yeah um so yeah it is um uh, it's just a case of uh, how you know letting the testing run its course and then being released but certainly from a point of view of uh the beta releases there was beta 1 then I think with it, it was, I want to say it was within two weeks, there was beta two. Uh, then there was about a week later, there was beta three, which didn't really have anything new in it. It was just a couple of little tweaks and stuff. And then probably what's it been now? Three weeks, something like that. This one's come out. So who knows if I wanted to guess, I would say within a month, I don't know, that's just purely speculation. So don't quote me on that at all. But um, yeah, it's, uh, it's what they said was, this is kind of like the, the final uh, version basically so it's just uh, unless they decide to add any other things in I did sneak in a couple of extra feature requests having seen this uh, version I still did in fact it was on the day that I did the release the the video about it I uh, I stuck in a couple of extra requests because it sort of like uh, gave me some ideas for other things once I started playing with what they'd already done so uh, but uh, I'm guessing they probably won't try and squeeze anything more in now but we'll see <laughs> Uh, so what I thought I'd do is just literally run through the things and uh, so I've sort of grouped them into uh, loosely into different sort of components or different things that they've added. Uh, so the first one is profiles. Um, this is something that lots of people had asked for and lots of people had workarounds because people use them for different things. I, how many profiles have I got? Let me just have a quick look because... Uh, I've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eight, eight, 12 profiles. So I've got tw basically 12 different use cases for Ecamm Live. Uh, now, previously, the way that this was done is I had a whole load of folders and each folder had a load of uh, different scenes and things like that in it. So that's not really uh, ideal because, um, well, it's just too many, to <laughs> too many to have in your list for a start, isn't it? Um, so having profiles means you can basically have a whole set of uh, a whole setup for um, one particular show or one particular use case that you've got for it, uh, and then you can just switch between them. Uh, and so that means that you know you don't have all of your um, you know all of the overlays for one show are all in the list of overlays for the other. Where so you've got a massive big list. It just makes it so much easier to uh, to to work with. Really, the other thing about it is it's actually the way that the profiles work. So it's it's it becomes like a package basically that has all of the assets for that profile within it and that means that you can just drag the profile out or rather export it i should say uh, and then you can send it to someone and then they can open it up and they've got all of the things in it so they've got all of the videos and uh, uh image overlays and things like that all contained in one file so it makes it great for uh, backup purposes but also just for sharing between uh between other people as well so uh, that is really really helpful <laughs> as a feature and like I say that one alone is something that a lot of people had asked for so that's going to be pretty good to see that uh, implemented. Uh, the next one is <laughs> uh, formatting so there's now lots of different ways that you can uh, format now specifically really I'm talking about overlays uh, but it does apply to other stuff as well so uh, I had a list here there's quite a lot of these so um, rounded corners on overlays <laughs> like I've got on my uh, my camera border actually this is still a graphical overlay that I'm using here but to be able to put these sort of rounded corners on camera overlays on uh, screen sharing overlays which we'll obviously come to that was a new feature in itself um, uh, and uh, text overlays as well we've got the new shape the, the squircle for the uh, the camera overlays which uh, I actually really like that it's got a nice sort of aesthetic look to it hasn't it a, quite a pleasing look to it so uh, there's that then um, yeah, rounded corners, that's quite versatile. It can be on all corners or just one of them or two of them or three of them or whatever. So that's pretty great. Uh, more with text overlays as well. So they can slide in now from the left or right as they could before, but also from the top and bottom. So if you're animating text on the screen, by the way, the animation that I've got down here, uh, that's I'm running that in Keynote, which was obviously what my uh, last video was about or one of my last videos. Uh, so I'm running this as a screen share overlay, but we'll, we'll come to that in a minute. Um, what else can you do with uh, with formatting? Uh, so, well, cropping as well, cropping overlays, and uh, it makes it much easier to, uh, you could always resize and have a custom size for your camera overlays and things like that, but now to just be able to crop into them uh, and resizing sizing them is, uh, is easier now. You can just drag it on 
the side of the image and drag it and it will resize the uh, the whole thing uh, whereas before you had to drag the corner and it was always a real pain to be honest because if you got near the edge where like where the buttons were then you'd have to hide the ui and then grab them and it was just a little bit finicky to uh, to actually grab those corners sometimes when you're organizing things uh also now support for cut copy and paste of scenes and overlays so that is uh, that makes things a lot easier as well and also the thing about that is you can cut copy and paste between profiles as well which is obviously another new the new feature the profiles feature but uh, it means that you can yeah just copy stuff between your profiles which is really uh, really useful uh, what else did they add? Uh, this is quite a long list. <laughs> uh, so yeah, resizing, duplicating. Uh, oh, that's so that's it. Yeah, you've got a contextual menu on the layers, so you can actually send them a bit like you could do in you know Photoshop or an editing uh, photo editing thing, where you could, you can basically move th stuff back in the stack. So you can do that from the contextual menu. Uh, menu. <laughs> uh, you can also obviously do it in the overlays panel by dragging things up and down the list, and that just sort of arranges where they are in this stack. Uh, the other thing is the uh, adding stroke to the outside of things so uh, like a border like I've got around the uh, the, the, the camera here as well uh, as I say this is a graphical overlay but you can get the same effect now with uh, just with the camera overlay so um, yeah that, that's why I think that these uh, these sort of graphical overlays like I've, I'm using here at the moment are going to be pretty much redundant because you can just build it all in Ecamm and I'm sure well I can't wait to see what else they're going to do in the next <laughs> after this release what they're going to iterate on next because it's just uh, it's just massive <laughs> so uh, let's have a little look what else they've got so they've got another, another couple of things this is something I haven't used but they've got um, uh, widgets html widgets that you can now run locally so before you could always like import things so you could have little uh, widgets that pop up you know when you get new subscribers or things like that um but uh, now you can actually create html widgets have them locally and have them running so uh, that's something i'm definitely going to play around with i've never actually uh, built any of those but uh, I, I was gonna say obviously but i do know about creating things in html so it'd be interesting to actually play around with that a nice little uh, nice little project a uh, couple of extra fi 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 fixes <laughs> uh keeping the widgets running in the background which was uh which was a good one because it was always a case of when you if you activated a widget overlay so like for example my buy me a coffee link uh if i activate that overlay then it used to take a little while to just sort of load up before it'd appear on screen whereas now you can have it so that it's continually running in the background and then when you toggle that overlay on it just appears with no load time so that's quite useful um so yeah lots of basically formatting things for the way that you can control the way things look on the screen and uh, these are the ones that i think are going to make as i say most of the overlays redundant uh, and so the uh, the next one <laughs> is the big one <laughs> screen sharing overlays and all of the things they've done in that that was just it was always a, a, a pain point for me, to be honest, trying to explain to people how to uh, do screen sharing in Ecamm Live well, because they only really had the option of uh, sharing the, the, the screen as a uh, like full frame and then you could always put the camera in and do picture in picture and then swap them around so that the screen sharing bit was picture in picture but it was a bit of a bit of a workaround really that was because uh, it meant that when I'd got like my sort of uh, traditional <laughs> I say traditional my usual sort of screen sharing shot where I've got my screen and then I've got my little picture up in the top corner the uh, the the picture of the screen was basically a picture in picture behind that was full screen like my camera and then I'd got my other camera uh, overlay over the top of it and, a, and a, an image overlay over the top of that so it was a bit of a workaround really because it meant you'd always got this secondary camera thing running in the background whereas now just to be able to add the camera overlay as uh, the, the sorry the screen sharing as an overlay and then add in all of these little features it means you can do things well like that one that I did with my little stats where uh, let me just bring that up again quickly <laughs> just to show so this thing where I got these stats up so that is just basically a little cropped in version of a specific portion of the screen uh, and then you can still see my mouse over it where you're not sharing the whole screen I'm also not sharing the whole app because that's just a little portion of the uh, the YouTube studio on uh, running on Chrome so uh, that's really great uh, the one thing that they haven't got in there at the moment this was the thing that actually I put in as a feature request is when you are sharing the entire screen as a uh, the source of the scene is a screen sharing there's an option that you can toggle in the uh, in the settings to show and hide um, or to, to show all of the uh, the ecamm windows as well now if you're doing stuff full screen then you can obviously 
do this in demo mode as well. You just do demo mode and then everyone can see everything. But my specific use cases, sometimes when I'm doing my demos, I want to show a specific window or a specific part of the Ecamm Live interface. So it would be great to have a screen sharing overlay, but then crop in to just that window. The only problem is that little toggle that you've got in the preferences for Ecamm Live where it shows all of the Ecamm windows, it only works if you've got the the sort of the source of the scene is the uh, the screen sharing. It doesn't work if you are with screen sharing overlays at the moment. So uh, or at least it hasn't been for me. So I've put that in as a uh, as a feature request anyway or uh, I actually submitted it as a bug, but then it turns out, uh, I think it was Ken or Glenn said, uh, oh, it only works with the uh, the main sort of screen sharing as opposed to screen sharing overlays. But yeah, adding in this feature is uh, with the, uh, being able to just add in screen sharing is uh, is brilliant as an overlay. And then with the latest beta, obviously this is what my whole recent series is about, uh, about green screen with it. This is another thing that I'd made uh, videos about before with how I used it with Keynote. And there were lots of ways you could get Keynote into uh, into Ecamm and have this effect. So I did it previously with a uh, NDI source and then had that as the camera overlay. So it was basically achieving the same effect, but using NDI. But I'm not a fan of NDI, to be honest. I don't like the way it behaves sometimes with uh, when you're doing screen sharing like that. So you can shut down, uh, sometimes if you shut down the, uh, uh, the the window, so the keynote window, for example, then it sort of totally loses, it. The NDI seems to lose that, uh, that, that window. So if you open it back up again, then you have to go and reset NDI or set that window as the NDI source again. And it's just a bit of a pain. Whereas this one, you can just toggle it on and off. It's, uh, it's quite, quite easy and intuitive. The other thing that I found with NDI, uh, doing it that way, and I don't quite know why this should be, but it always seemed as though when I did that with uh, using NDI and bringing a keynote presentation into Ecamm uh, and then toggled the green screen on, I always found that it sort of affected the colors more than this one. So this one, the color that I'm getting now in this, uh, in this image below um, is like, as is as it should be it's accurate whereas when i did it over as a camera overlay using ndi this uh, sort of like bluey color here that's in this sort of banner um would have been affected slightly because it's got a slight elements of green in it so it's as if um i don't know the way to i don't know the technical reason why this would be but it's almost as if the keying is like more sort of precise i want to say that word precise for um just removing just the green rather than other colors around it so uh, yeah, don't know. If, I don't know why that is, but it just certainly does seem a lot better. But to have it integrated in any case as a uh, as a feature where you just toggle it on and off is just uh, uh, pretty amazing, really. <laughs> uh, the other thing that this is great for is for um, uh, like when you're having transitions and things like that, then you could do those in Keynote. Now, the other feature request that I put in, which uh, I don't know how trivial this is to do, um, was to basically have the same little toggle for the green screen um, for video overlays because. This is great because you can bring in keynote presentations. And so my specific use case for this is going to be when I'm doing more like presentation stuff, either on Zoom or for course material that I make uh, rather than the YouTube channel. But it does mean that I've got keynote running now and all of these little transitions that I've got running are live transitions in keynote. Well, if you think about making like a uh, some sort of stinger or something like that that comes across the screen to uh, go between scenes and things like that, if we could uh, if we could make those in Keynote, which you can obviously, and that's going to be one of my videos this week as well, um, but then export them uh, as videos and just bring them into um, uh, Ecamm and just toggle the green screen there, it would make uh, a lot of uh, a lot of sense. Uh, but again, I don't know how trivial that is. Whereas at the moment, I have to export it, then I have to remove the green, and then I have to bring it into the uh, the scene. Obviously, you can do uh, slides with a transparent background. Uh, and so if you've only got some basic stuff on the screen, then that would work. But it wouldn't work to do what I'm doing here, where it's actually animating the uh, the green components, because what you can't do is sort of uh, subtract from the, the background during an animation. You can only sort of say, right, well, here's the, uh, the writing. I want to subtract this from the shape behind, but it's sort of like a static thing then. So... Uh, so yeah, being able to have green screen working with uh, 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 movies would be great. And it would just mean you could just bring a movie in that's got like green elements and just remove them with a little uh, toggle. So uh, that's me wishing. <laughs> we'll see if it makes it in though. So uh, so yeah, screen sharing is pretty uh, amazing. Um, next we had, what was it uh, on my list? Cameras. So um, 
There's a few things being added, so camera effects. I know there's, uh, there's still a couple of feature requests that we're waiting for. Michael, I'm talking with you. <laughs> uh, so the first one, though, is the camera effects window. We've got um, a thing where if you set up your camera effects because they are remembered on a scene by scene basis so if you've got a camera in you can tweak things like the color the brightness the temperature and all that sort of stuff um, and it's just for that particular scene um, but now there's a little button so you can basically just apply this to all scenes which is great because it means obviously if you are do want to make changes to your camera then you can just set it up in one scene and then apply to all scenes so that's quite handy um, you've also got a button to rotate so you can rotate your cameras by uh, 90 degrees or whatever you do silly things like that <laughs> uh, that's useful though with things like overhead shots where you might have your camera positioned and the way that it's mounted or whatever you want to be able to rotate it so that's definitely something that uh, something i've had before with an overhead so uh, that would be useful uh, and then we've got things just little tweaks really about how you can uh, when you zoom in you can constrain things onto an axis so if i sort of zoom in a little bit uh, before you can always pan around like this but now if you just hold shift down, it will just keep it on a particular axis. So that's uh, that's quite useful, I think. Uh, so, yeah, these are sort of like little minor uh, sort of tweaks that actually do make a difference and add up to sort of really quite an amazing uh, update overall. Uh, so what else did they add in? Uh, oh, support for some other cameras, some of the newer cameras that have come out over USB. Uh, so I mentioned that in my, uh, my other video. But, um, yes, yeah, uh, for the A6600, the ZV-E10, DSC, A7S and Fujifilm FGX. 100s <laughs> so those now just work when you plug in a usb cable they just work over usb uh, which is uh, great um and then network cameras as well was something else they added in and then they've updated the virtual camera but i've i've I use the virtual camera every day uh, many times a day um but it's uh, i've not noticed anything i've not noticed what they've done so it must be just something like under the hood as it were uh so that is the uh, the camera updates uh next is uh, for streaming uh, so now you can stream to Twitter. Now I've got to find out what uh, what happened with this because I did actually add, add in my Twitter credentials and then uh, went to try going live and it said I couldn't stream to it live. So I've got to just go and check. I, don't, I just haven't had time to go in. I don't know if it completed the sort of authentication process. So I just need to log into Twitter and uh, see, uh, see see what I can figure out about it. But certainly streaming to Twitter is, uh, is a thing. So uh, that's been added in. They've also added in a couple of other little things like the... Um, uh, uh, twi uh, Twitch ingestion selection, so you can just select which server, like local to where you are, you're selecting, so uh, or you're, you're streaming through. So, as we already had with the LinkedIn and the, uh, the the Facebook one, I think had that as well. So that is that. The next thing is interview mode. Big updates in there in terms of the way that works. I mean, the I think it was, was that beta two or beta one. I can't remember now. It's quite a while ago, and there's been so many, but. Um, yeah, that's added some uh, things so you can like customize your link title and things like that. Uh, it's added in the chat for interview chat. So when you've got people on the interview, you've got a, per, uh, a sort of um, a chat between the people on the on the interview as well. And then what else did it add? Uh, customization of the links title. Oh, yeah, you've got that. Oh, and then also being able to sort of brand the links that you send out to people as well. You can add in your um, obviously your domain and things like that into it or your name rather so customize the link but then you can also add your image for the uh, you know how it shows up when you send it out in uh, messages and things like that uh, and then also what did they add as well there was uh, oh, also the logo so when the, the person on the other side is logging in uh, it's got your sort of branding and logo on that actual the actual sort of login page for the interviewee as well so that's uh, that's pretty uh, pretty great. And then uh, finally, what we've got is uh, Stream Deck. So they've added some new uh, Stream Deck functionality. Uh, what did they add? The mute. So you've now got uh, with the mute key, you can now mute specific uh, interviewees or uh, guests on the show, I should say. Um, so you can set the key to to mute guests one, two, and three, and four, and so on. Um, they've also added in a play animated overlay button. So before you always had show and hide overlays. There was just a bit of a quirk with that though, because if you had a video that ran to, you know, a blank screen at the end or something like that, if you just use the show overlay button, it would play the video and then it would go to the end where it was blank and then it would stay on screen. So if you wanted to play that again, uh, when you press the button, it would actually have the effect of just hiding it. So you'd have to press the button again to get it to show again. So the, uh, the, uh, the animated overlay button basically 
it will just play the uh, the animation regardless of if it is currently technically visible as an overlay uh, or not. So whether or not the overlay itself is toggled on, uh, it will just play the video. So uh, that sort of fixes that problem. Uh, there's, then there's a few, three that basically, or two that I'd had uh, before as multi actions. So I had to have a multi action to switch to uh, Ecamm and then toggle the keyboard shortcut. And so one of those was de uh, live demo mode. So now there's just a button for that. Uh, and then also there's one to show and hide the window controls that are over the top of Ecamm. So uh, that's handy if you're doing sort of, you know, before you're actually live or recording, you're just sort of adjusting layouts and things. It's kind of good to just get all of the controls off the screen uh, and so there's a button for that and then they've also got one to show and hide the uh, the most recent comment as well so if I just press that it will just pop up the most recent comment <laughs> there you go and then they've obviously still got the button to hide the comment as well so that is basically if you think about it a massive update the people that are getting this are just going to think this is pretty uh <laughs> pretty major and so I'm basically it's going to change the way as I say that I would recommend that people would be using Ecamm Live uh, and I did that video that one of the first videos I did actually was about a four and a half hour video all about uh, <laughs> like taking you from start to finish with setting up Ecamm uh, if anyone wants to hop on and jump uh, join in the conversation by the way about the beta feel free to use the link take one tech.io slash join um, but anyway yeah it's uh, it's 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 pretty uh, pretty awesome. I just lost my train of thought completely there. <laughs> what I was talking about, um, but yeah, it's it's going to be pretty uh, pretty amazing update. And uh, oh, it, was, it was the way that we we're going to do things. So all of the things like graphical overlays and stuff like that. We're just going to be able to do that with the camera overlays themselves and adding borders. Then if you combine this with stuff that uh, like Anna and Fulgens do on their Building Blocks channel and also in the Ecamm group every, uh, is it Monday? Uh, I want to say Monday 6 a.m. But that's just for me, I think. <laughs> uh, so, oh, Michael's joining. One second. Let me just get Michael in here. Uh, sign guest one. Hello, Michael. Oh, I've got you as Greg. Hang on, let me just uh, adjust that. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm doing very well. And yourself? Uh, very well, indeed. Yes, very well. Yeah. Oh, I've got to. I've, got, I've still got a hangover from the last stream. That comment is. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah. I have a quick question. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Okay. You were just talking about uh, the uh, interview area where you could rename it to whatever you want. Yeah. Just tell me, just tell me, I renamed mine to Renko City. Is this, yep. is that going to work? Uh, yeah, it should do. Let me just uh, have a quick check. It should, uh, it should do that. If you uh, come into the settings in there, let me have a quick look. Uh, yeah, that is just the, um, uh, uh, let me have a little look, where has it gone now? Because I used to put a number behind it and I changed it to Wrinkle City. Yeah, it it should do. If if that's where you've gone in and edited it, then uh, yeah. Okay, that's what I wanted to know. Uh -huh. <laughs> and how's uh, how's everything going there with you and uh, you and Gage? Oh, is he, wonderful. Is he behaving? Wonderful. <laughs> he is, he is. He's laying right here. Um, uh -huh. you, did a, you did a fantastic job on the uh, uh, beta release. Oh. And I've been following every one of your uh, 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 keynote ones uh -huh. because... I really, really have some ideas that I wanted to use. Well, you know, from the past when I was trying to figure different things out. Yes, yeah. And uh, and that green screen is really helping. Uh huh. Well, it's it's a it is a, it is a real game changer. Like for me as well. It's uh, yeah, it makes things so much easier. So the, obviously, I've done the first two videos, and I've got three more to do, and they're going to be um, uh, sort of get slight, you know, more and more. Uh, I want to say advanced, but just using adding a few more features and things like that in. So. Uh, I think you'll like those. <laughs> those, those yeah. yeah, in the next couple of days. <laughs> oh, oh, I'll be watching. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> I actually, I watch your video. You know, I download your videos after I watch them. Right, and right. And then I play, I play them on one screen, and I use Keynote on the other screen to, to yeah. go, step through what you're showing. Yeah, well, that's that's how well. I do things when I when I'm watching like tutorials and stuff like that because that's 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 what I've been using YouTube for for years since you know before I started obviously creating stuff myself. It was always the tutorials that I used to watch. Yeah. I'm having a little problem with one that I've been putting together. Uh, 
you remember those side cards that I had yes, coming yeah. out? Okay, yeah. well, I, I'm working with that. And when I do the show in window, the first two show up fine. And then the second one, I have to click again. And at any rate, it, they're, they're not working as smooth as they should. Right, right. And uh, so uh, I might send you that file and see if you can see what I've done wrong. Yeah, sure. No problem. Yeah, yeah. That would that would be good. Yeah, because awesome. <laughs> I really yeah. like it to work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what the next video that I'm going to make with uh, about the green screen screen sharing thing is about um, obviously if you're using like a, a camera overlay where you've got a board around it. Previously, when you'd got like an actual physical graphical board around the edge, then the way that I had done those before with those sort of slide things that come in from the side yeah. is they would appear that they were coming from behind the uh, the border. Whereas now we haven't really got an actual border because we've just got a little line around the camera. So the next video is basically about adding a cropping area around the uh, the PowerPoint, the, the, the keynote slide rather. Uh, so you've got a green background, but then we add the effectively the border as a green border over the at the top of the keynote slide. And so anything that sort of flies in from the side is then coming from behind that. So it sort of mimics the effect of having a real overlay on the screen, if you see what I mean. Oh, okay. So that that will be my next uh, next video though. So that might actually just uh, solve the uh, <laughs> the problem. I don't know, but uh, <laughs> we'll have a look at it. Uh, problem is that screen share doesn't crop down the usable area. Greg says. Uh, I'm not quite sure what you mean by that one actually. Um, so you can crop the screen sharing obviously if you do a screen sharing overlay because we've got the option. Uh, I don't know. I might be missing something on that one. <laughs> uh, yeah, after after I think about that one, I'm not not quite sure what you mean by that one, Greg. <laughs> but um, yeah, certainly you can obviously crop the uh, the anything that you're sharing on the screen. Um, and so technically, you could have like something running with green screen and then just crop the uh, the edges of the part of the screen that you were sharing. So I think that that would still work. But maybe I've misunderstood that one. <laughs> So, uh, so when's your, your next live plan then, Michael? Actually, I was planning on doing it this week. I've been making a lot of no notes and I'm actually going live on YouTube. Oh, brilliant. Oh, I look forward to that. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. I, uh, I, I assume earlier when you were, uh, talking about, uh, the cameras that we were discussing <laughs> my green screen problem. Oh yes. That was, I meant to mention that. Yeah. Yeah. So that was about, um, uh, currently, when you set the uh, the green screen on a camera, uh, it is sort of pinned to the frame of the camera. So if you imagine like right. the size of your camera shot, yeah. the green screen image behind will always be panned to that, uh, uh, pit fixed to that. So the reason being that if you zoom the camera, you want the background to zoom. But the problem is, if you want to just adjust the zoom and position of your camera first, then it can put out all of your green screen background. So the sort of uh, the feature that we've requested <laughs> yeah, is uh, yeah. to allow you to adjust it first and then sort of lock it in position. So if you had like a little toggle that was sort of like unlinked, basically the camera overlay from the background, fixed it all into the right position and then locked them together and then you could still have the zoom function. So that was the uh, yeah. the feature request we put in. And uh, I think, yeah, Ken and Glenn, I think did say, uh, sounds like a good idea. So uh, we'll keep our fingers crossed and see if it makes it into the... Yeah. The next beta, so. if not the next version. But <laughs> well, <laughs> and, uh, for now, just, I've been. Oh, there's Tom. <laughs> I'll just say hi, Tom. <laughs> yeah, for uh, for now, I'm using that workaround that both you and Ken and Glenn recommended. Yeah, uh, yeah. But but like I said, you have to blur the picture in Photoshop. Yeah. To bring it in because you have no blur ability in. Uh, That's it. Yeah. Does you don't have that depth of field. Yeah, yeah. I mean, with, with my background, I actually did end. I, I sort of pre-blurred it in Photoshop anyway, um, I, I, because originally I was looking at OBS. So with that one, they didn't have the blur function. So uh, that's why I sort of pre-blurred this. But yeah, you would totally lose that option to blur it if you were just putting it in as an image background. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And what else do you like but, about the new beta that you've been playing with? Uh, well, let's see. Uh, I like um, the uh, ability to uh, keep your, uh, overlays open so uh -huh. that if you want to use them again, I like that. Yeah. Uh, I, I love the, uh, the new hide the controls button. 
Yes, yeah. Uh, and uh, the new uh, screen share button. Uh -huh. uh, what, I'm, what I'm having trouble with in, in Keynote is um, when I press uh, next slide or previous slide, it doesn't do anything. Do you know what? This was working for me fine when I did that demo, but then this morning when I've done it, it's not working for me as well. Yeah. And I thought, oh, it must have been some issue with uh, like moving my, my buttons over to my live streaming Stream Deck profile instead of the other one. So I went and deleted them and put them in again. And it wasn't working for me this morning. So um, I'm not quite sure. Uh, it, must be a, it must be something to do with uh, a Keynote, that must be. Because I did the whole, the whole of those videos that I did. I was using those buttons. Uh, and then just this morning, it was uh, not working. <laughs> So uh, it's a bit strange that is. I'll, I'll, I'll be digging into that one after this. So uh, I'll let you know how it goes with that. <laughs> yeah, because I, because I, I, playing with that, um, the slight side notes that I was telling you about. Yep. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't go to the next slide. It doesn't do anything. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, I'll uh -huh. wait for your answer. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the other thing that I forgot to mention in the sort of rundown of everything, which makes a difference for me, is the way that you can lock layers together as well. So uh, that was something mm -hmm. that they added in, not this last one, but I think number two or one or something like that. So uh, I did oh, I do like where you've feature. got like, like basically grouping stuff as well. It makes it easier. The one that I'd like to sort of add on as a feature to that, which I've dropped in the beta group as well, is uh, to be able to have, once you've grouped stuff together, have them all scale together as well. So you can actually just resize the whole group. So yeah. at the moment yeah. it yeah. locks them and you can move them, but you still have to resize them individually. So uh, yeah. yeah, that's just a bit of a pain. <laughs> Uh, hi, Wayne. Great to see you. And uh, Neil, uh, the new Twitter, stream to Twitter option. Uh, yeah, so the, the, with the, um, uh, the streaming to uh, Periscope from uh, Restream, that I wanted to stream to Twitter, and that was going to be my only option. But it seemed that when I go into uh, my Restream to actually set that link up, um, because they've sort of retired Periscope, it wouldn't let me set it up as a new account or I could never actually link to Twitter. So um, even though technically it's there in Restream, it just seemed for me that if it's a new, uh, a new account, I, can't, uh, I can't, couldn't do it anyway. So yeah, I'll definitely be, uh, definitely be trying that one out though. Uh, and you, so you're going to, you'll be streaming to YouTube, Michael, yes. and then are you going to stream to anywhere else as well? Uh, like do simultaneous streaming or? No, not at the moment. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm having trouble uh, streaming to Facebook. So uh, I'll have to uh, find out what the problem is and, and then I can stream to both. Uh -huh. Right, right. The, the Facebook one that I set up immediately in for now was set up to be a private group so that I could stream to my family. Right, right. Uh -huh. uh, and, and, and well, and friends or whatnot. Uh, yep. So I have to change it to, you know, to be universal. Well, I don't yes, know if yep. that's the right term, but. I get you, uh, public sort of thing. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, but for now I've, I've got to go to YouTube. And I also have to make a little video because they always ask, what's the first video you want them to see, you know, up in the. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Is that is that something special? You just make a it's just so that when they go onto the uh, the landing like you know your channel page it's got something and some people say just take, you know, one of your videos and put it up there, one that represents what you do. So for up until I think it was two weeks ago that I actually made that video and I made a specific one which was kind of like, you know, welcome to the channel, that sort of thing. But up until that's then what I, I just, wanted to do. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a nice idea really. So people go there, get to understand a bit about what it's all about and, and that sort of thing. Uh, and then you can also select a video that's going to be for, uh, basically you can, there's two, there's one for new visitors to the channel, but then you've also got another one that is specifically for um, existing subscribers who are just visiting the, the, the channel mm -hmm. page. And so there you might want to have a different video or you can set it to be just the latest or pick a video or something like that. So yeah, it's a couple of, yeah. a couple of options with that. Well, that's good. That's good. Uh -huh. So uh, you, how's the, how's the daughter? Oh, she's much better. Yeah, yeah. We've actually got to take her back to the uh, the dentist today. Uh, so it's two weeks since uh, since her little accident, bouncing on the bed with a big sister, and she fell off and uh, bumped her teeth <laughs> and pushed them back. But she's five, so they're uh, quite flexible. <laughs> um, yeah. And uh, yeah, she's uh, yeah, she recovered a lot quicker than I did. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she was. Uh, I back I, to, back I, to I know the feeling. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I know what you must have been feeling. 
Yeah. <laughs> to be honest, when I was younger, I was always in the accident and emergency unit. I forget how many times, but I had all sorts of uh, bumps and uh, uh, broken bones and things like that. So it seemed like uh, <laughs> my parents were always taking me to the A and E unit. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, the- hi, Eileen. I'll just say quickly hi to Eileen. Always nice to see hi, you, Eileen. Guys, Eileen. <laughs> uh, yeah, from. Sorry, go on. Oh, no, I, I was going to read what was up there. <laughs> All right. Uh, a quick hack about um, using the free version of Restream by Ecamm lets you stream in HD if you use the Restream native app. It is at... Oh, I see, right, yeah. I, I've never used the Restream native app, to be honest. I've only ever done stuff through Ecamm. So, um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Eileen's asking who's got the squeaky chair. <laughs> uh, Neat. <laughs> I can't help it. Yeah. Well, I and, guess I uh, could keep it from there. Now it won't go back. <laughs> um, so Michael, we're business growth ready. That's another Michael, the other Michael, the UK Michael. He's uh, saying about that's talking about the video on the YouTube uh, homepage. So your video would be basically like an elevator pitch style video as to what's in it for them. So basically what's what's going to be covered on the channel and that sort of uh, that sort of stuff. And okay. uh uh, hey Sammy, always great to see you popping in here as well. <laughs> uh, yeah, she's much much better. Thank you, Eileen. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, what, what, with in terms of your uh, live stream, Michael, what are you thinking in terms of uh, scheduling? Are you going to be doing it sort of on a regular basis at a specific time? Or I, the, I the hope to. I'm trying to trying to figure out what I can actually focus on, right, um, and. I don't know. Maybe I'll <laughs> redo some that I see see on the internet. I've I've heard people say go to other people's streams and see how they did. Say the ZV E10, yeah. uh-huh. and then do your own version of that. Uh, yeah, show yeah. some of your gear and explain how you use it. Yeah. Uh, so, so those are all possibilities. Uh, also, I can talk an awful lot about being a senior citizen <laughs> 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 and. Uh, dodging golf carts here in wrinkle city (laughs) (laughs) right well i think if you've got something that you're like passionate about which you are about like technology and stuff like that then doing that but just adding in all of the other stuff that's about you personally as well that adds you know your character and things to it it's um i mean all of the stuff that i cover on my do my videos on it's not like i'm the only person doing it and half of them i learned from other people anyway you know it's it's some stuff i've figured out myself but a lot of them is you know i've watched doc's videos and if you look down my list of videos, there are some that are a direct correlation with videos that Doc's done that I, you know, I learned stuff from him or from uh, whoever else, from Tom Buck or whoever. Uh, mm-hmm. And then uh, just just making my own spin on it once I start using the the the, the thing and uh, you know, yeah, putting my own thing on it. So um, yeah, I'll, I'll send you my video list over and you can have a look through some of those titles and <laughs> <laughs> okay, pick out some I, of those. Uh, uh, I was going to say, oh. Uh, on Doc stream today, he was having an awful lot of trouble. Was he? Uh, oh. he? Yeah, he couldn't seem to. We kept seeing it a black screen or an orange screen with nothing on it. Right, right. Uh, then we couldn't hear him. But finally, I get, he got it straightened out. But somebody asked a question about the the new beta, and he yep. said, "You need to go look at Alex's video on <laughs> Take One Ten." <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so he recommended because he also had a little bit of a problem doing the the. Uh, new beta versions some of the things he couldn't figure out right, and right. uh his um what was i going to say the uh he had put in stream deck and then done something to it so when he was trying to figure out how to turn off the uh the uh menus on your your main screen yeah you know the hide controls uh, it was no longer in there. He said he was going to have to wait for the next version so that the, he can get the screen to stream right, right. back update. Uh-huh. Uh, but yours, yours went smooth and it, <laughs> and it helped a lot. Oh, I see what you mean. So he, so when he updated to the beta, the um, the little window that you toggle to say update stream deck, he hadn't pressed that one, perhaps. Uh, uh, apparently, yeah. Right, right. I never thought about that. I never thought about because in my uh, my video, I sort of mentioned that you need to do it, but I didn't sort of stress the importance of if you don't do it, then there's no way to sort of re 
you know get the that window up again that's uh it's interesting that no. is uh-huh yeah so uh so he said he's going to have to wait for the next version and hopefully yeah. there'll be a stream deck uh in there yeah so yeah. there, there were a few could, things uh, he i was just wondering if he could sort of uninstall and then reinstall would that prompt him to update it as well that might be another another way around but uh, i don't know I don't right know. right well just goes to show technical problems happen to even the best <laughs> yeah yeah exactly <laughs> well this is this is great being live with you uh, it is really nice yeah so for those that don't know me and michael have quite a back and forth with each other anyway uh, but it's sort of by video uh, videos back and forth so it's really nice to just actually sit and chat we obviously see each other on uh, uh, office hours and uh, on streams and things like that but it's not quite the same as having a, a chat is it <laughs> no uh, no <laughs> and uh, oh uh, uk michael says uh, what's your uh, channel topic so it's uh, uh, Wrinkle City is the uh, the channel on YouTube, and then uh, yeah, you can uh, explain <laughs> what what the ch the channel's about. Well, it's just I as I said, I'm going to talk about my gear and how I use it, uh, demonstrate some of the things that I use. Uh, I can talk about you know problems with being a senior citizen uh, because it is called Wrinkle City after a while <laughs> after all, uh, and um, then I also have some programs you know like you show a lot of of different programs that you get from uh, from the, uh, oh, what's the name of that thing? Um, uh, oh, uh, Setup. Setup, yeah. Yeah. You you uh, you show a lot of stuff for that. So, And I have some programs that I use that I find to be better than some of the others. And uh, I'm going to show those. And of course, again, it's just personal preference uh -huh. that I like. I like what I have. And... Uh, who knows? Other people may not care for them. You know, it becomes uh, the choice of the individual. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's so, so, there's so many. Yeah. I was just going to say, sorry, with setup, there's so many things in there. It's, it's pretty amazing that all the different apps that you can get. Mm -hmm. It is. It is. In fact, I used to own um, uh, real, the web page maker. I forget, but real something. Uh -huh. It's from and uh, and now it's in setup, and and uh, and I paid full bore for it eventually a while back. Well, I, I I did that. I paid for a lot of them up front, and then uh, yeah, they they came out in there. So, <laughs> uh, hello, Greg. Hi, Greg. Hey, everybody. How are you doing? Hey. I've been a busy busy day, <laughs> getting a lot of random things done. Uh -huh. Got this little bad boy today. Oh, cool, cool! I saw your photo. <laughs> with, I, did, the I did. I finally, <laughs> I, I finally turned it on. <laughs> yes. Uh, and our our puppy had surgery, so he's out now. Oh. And yeah, and I I have the last throes of getting ready for the bike race tomorrow. So yeah. Oh yeah. I've, I, how much of riding have you done the past week? I've, I've not. Uh, I've not um, so I hurt, knee, I hurt my knee. I hurt. I hurt my knee two course. weeks ago, and yeah. I've done very little since. Um, maybe like I've only done like 10, 15 miles indoors. So uh -huh. we'll be going straight to the to the big to the that big show. That is quite a leap, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, I don't know if you <laughs> yeah. heard at the beginning, but I've not not done anything this week as well. I just had a bit of a mad mad week with uh, with yeah. work and stuff. So eh, it's I've okay, got like. Right? Average of I think 40, 42 miles a day or something to do like that between now and the end of the month. So I'm going to have uh, <laughs> sore, very sore legs. <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah, yeah, uh, that's quite oh, a hi, to have to catch up on. I'll just say hi, Jeff, because uh, uh, I've never actually met, uh, seen you in the stream. Obviously, see you on office hours, and uh, thank you for being a supporter on buying me a coffee as well, Jeff. Uh, and uh, so yeah, some parallels with uh, with Michael. <laughs> Uh, you've always got really great uh, answers to questions, by the way, Jeff, in, and comments in uh, in office hours. So I can't wait to see what you do because you've obviously got a lot of uh, <laughs> a lot of skill and knowledge to impart for everybody. So I'm really looking forward to that. <laughs> Alec, I did have a question. Actually, maybe you can show me how to do something that I can't figure out how to do. Go on, sure, sure. Yep. So I posted this question in the ecam group as well. You see uh -huh. how you have your um, take one tech sort of lower thirds there yes yep what if you had three of them in the same location um if to 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 what end 
to so i guess to, i have these three banners they're def they're different links right yep. um, and i'm trying to turn one on but make sure the other two turn off so yeah that would just be in stream deck have a multi-action yeah. in stream deck so basically i you tried have... it but it it only has show hide it doesn't have on like make it on or make it off <laughs> i get what you're saying yeah so um hmm I, I i see the problem now yeah because you could have if the if the two of them are both off then when you press the button then unless you've just activated yeah. uh that is a bit tricky actually yeah you want to sort of cycle between them don't you um well, yeah well i want to make sure that when you turn one on that none of the others are on right yeah yeah <laughs> I mean, you could just have a button for each one, uh, and then you I basically... do have a button for each one, and I right. just have to remember to push it again so that it turns it yeah. off before so you switch put... to the next one. Yeah. So if you had them sort of like three in a line or whatever, you'd just be a case of like toggle that one off and toggle, press that one on. So there'd be a gap in between it. But is it that you want it to just like there to be no blank space at the bottom? I would rather not have to remember <laughs> to like mm -hmm. push it off. Yeah, um, yeah. I was hoping I was hoping we could trade it like a radio button group and somehow be like, yeah, when this one's on, these two should be off. Yeah. Um but the state yeah. the opposite state is not the same. Like I don't want the other two on when the one is off, right? Like Yeah, yeah, got you. Got you. <laughs> um Yeah, you would have to have a separate button which would be Yeah, it'd get complicated. I, I think I mentioned in that question actually about using Stream Deck multi actions, but now now you mention it, you you would have to have like one to flip from overlay one to overlay two you'd have to have another one to flip from overlay one to overlay three one from overlay yeah. two it, yeah that would get really uh we need really an messy. intentional maybe we need an intentional action for hide scene or hide overlay yeah. versus show overlay not show yeah. hide uh-huh yeah i've yeah. I, w what i've wanted to do as well is actually be able to do uh, things in keyboard maestro now let me just have a quick check now of mentioning this uh mm -hmm. actually i bet there's a keyboard way to do it that there is not it's it's that you've only got the same option as you've got in um uh, stream deck so there is a thing oh, right. to hide so overlays but yeah turn them. um you can do uh next overlay so that would be a way to do it but again that could you could be one way to do it but that doesn't give me the ability to jump it, it, like you, so for example I have it for like, here's the link to down, get some free coins versus here's the link for our show versus here's the link yeah. to our listing on Zealous. And I, I go in order often, but you know, every once in a while, I want to remind people maybe differently of a different one. Yeah. Let's just have a little try of this a moment. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just basically add in uh, a text overlay. So I've got this text. Oops. I need to. Where's that gone now? Hang on a minute. We'll get to the bottom of this. I think that that might actually, because you've only got three, technically you can always cycle to one of the other ones because you can either cycle forward to go to the next one right. or backwards to go to the other one. But if I so want if I, the middle one, then I have yeah. to click that one intentionally. So let's do text one and then I'll just stick this down here. Obviously these would all be in exactly the same place in reality, but we'll just see if it works to sort of show and hide them. So this one, I'll make this text two. And this one, whoops. This one, I'll make that text three. Right, so if I show and hide those oh, those two, and then I'm going to group these. I'll share, If this works, I'll share my screen and show you what I've done. <laughs> but I'm putting these text <laughs> overlays all in a, uh, in a group now because I'm hoping that if I do uh, the, uh, what is it? Control shift left and right, I think. Uh, control shift left and right. Yeah. So if you put if you've got your overlays That's and you put them you mm -hmm. put them in a group, um, then basically those left and right arrows will just basically cycle forwards and backwards. And because they're in a group, when you get to the end, it will cycle to the other one. So you would literally gotcha. just be able to put those three in. And then that isn't a stream deck button, I don't think. Next overlay. That is definitely a feature request now. Though, there is a button. I think there is a button for that. Yeah. Oh, oh actually, there's there? a next scene. There's next no, scene. No, sorry. But not next, I'm wrong. Next overlay. Yeah. So, um, but you could you could make that as a button, though, on Stream Deck. Just have it as a, uh, it would be, 
<clears throat> it would be a multi-action. So you'd have to have a multi-action so that you basically, the first action is open Ecamm Live because then if Ecamm mm. Live isn't open, it brings it to the front and it becomes the active application. And then the mm. next one would be to go forward would be command shift uh, right and command shift left yeah. to go back. And then, yeah, you could just basically uh, with that flick to anyone that you uh, you wanted. Whoops, I've changed down. Ah, now hang on a minute. It does depend on which overlay is actually selected as well. So because now I've just clicked on another little widget. <laughs> oh, this is, oh, I thought I thought. Well, we you could it. do you could do show overlay first, technically. And yeah, then show overlay. Yeah, show hide yeah. basically to make sure that one's visible. Yeah, it would just get like so now. So I'm using these keys to go back and forth. But let's say for some yeah. reason I just click on a completely different overlay down here somewhere. Uh, and then I cycle through that. It's now mo lost my position in it. So I've got to right. come back and physically mm -hmm. click on that text three overlay. Uh, this would be a great feature though. So uh, <laughs> let's <laughs> let's get it in the group as a, as a feature request because um, yeah, I can totally see the, the use case for it. Uh, but what I would love to have is actually a way for all of these things to be accessible by keyboard maestro uh, there is a bit of a sort of hack around it in terms of scenes and things like that because the scenes all appear as uh in the menu so if you go to scenes you can just see all of your different scenes so if you did want to do anything right. with keyboard maestro and i do this with profiles as well um anything that you've got in a menu in uh any program in fact on the mac you can assign keyboard shortcuts to it mm -hmm. so uh, i use a thing called uh Custom Shortcuts is the name of the application. It's a free application. You can do it with the Mac built in anyway in System Preferences, but uh, mm. Custom Shortcuts is just a much better program for it. And all you do is you set, set the application and you write the name of the menu item uh, and then you can apply a shortcut. So with that one, I've just basically gone into my, uh, I've done it for my profiles. So all of my different profiles, I've got a keyboard shortcut. Mm. Uh, and then I've got a, um, a keyboard maestro macro that basically when I press a button, it will switch to the right profile, uh, open all the windows that I want open for Ecamm, and then it uses Moom to sort of position them all. But you could do the same with the uh, like the scenes as well. <clears throat> so what would be good is if all of the overlays were actually listed in the menu, because uh, at the moment it just, it all if you go into the overlays menu of Ecamm, it just has the recently added ones. So you don't get all of the list of them. But if there was some way to access the full list of overlays, then you'd be able to apply a shortcut to it and then you'd be able to do it all with uh, like the way we've just mm. said with either keyboard maestro or stream deck or whatever yeah uh -huh. so uh yeah mm. i'll just say i'll just say goodbye to uh, neil he says he's got to uh, drop out thanks for stopping in <laughs> um but yeah it's uh having having that's the sort of next level of uh of uh, development that personally for my own selfish means I'd well i mean it. we've got a we've got a shortcut for next page in the pdf why don't we have like you know a yeah, way to yeah. articulate it individual <laughs> yes yeah yeah <laughs> uh i suppose it's one of those things that's just you know the, the green screen screen sharing thing is something that i don't think um ken and glenn saw the use case for they said oh people have asked for this i don't know why you'd want to do that because they were obviously just thinking about they the way that they use screen sharing is they're just showing their screen and they're showing demonstrating yeah. what's on it and they hadn't really thought about what it unlocks in terms of the power of just doing presentations and stuff like that because i do a lot of a lot of presentations in things like zoom and whatever um but also yeah. creating course material uh, and nobody wants to see slides. <laughs> you don't want to be standing, you know, with picture in picture and slides over on this side and you're just running through a slide deck or something. But to be able to bring all this stuff in in a sort of more immersive way is uh, it's just phenomenal, to be honest, making, you know, sort of more immersive presentations. <clears throat> yeah. I wonder. Um, oh, I did. I had a comment before I, 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 I slipped out, so I don't sure if you saw it about the the bounding box on the screen oh, shares yeah. as well. I didn't quite get what you were talking about. So, with that, so. so if you take a window and you share it, yeah, the, if you green screen out the part around it, the bounding box is actually much bigger still. It's still the original size, right? So if you're actually trying to resize it, what ends up happening is you're still constrained by the original bounding box, not the, uh, you, you the mean, new one. You mean where it's got a border around it? 
Is that what you Yeah. Mean? Well, not so even that- the border. So like, I'll give you an example. Today, when I did my stream, I, I did it all in Ecamm for the first time, actually. And I screen shared a browser window, yeah. but it was showing my background behind it. Yeah. So I green screened it down to the window. However, even though the browser window was this wide, the control, the bounding box for it was actually this wide. Right. And I'll so I couldn't that... actually size the browser to be bigger, even though I had room. Got you. I'll tell you what that is, though. Um, that is when you add on a screen sharing overlay. Let me, uh, what's the best way to do this? This is going to look quite big if I uh, just share my whole screen. Uh, I'll just add it in and tell you what it is because if I add a screen sharing overlay. So now let me come and, oops. Where's that gone? I'm going to put that somewhere else. Put it up at the top. Um, so now we've got this screen sharing overlay. So that's, you can see my green there is just basically my keynote. Yeah. That's what's running the keynote. But what I'll do is I'll, I'll come over to here and I'll share a specific thing, which let me share my um, YouTube stats thing that I've got up and like this. And what I think that you've got is, uh, do you mean something like, like this? See, if you click on it, uh, so yours you is mean small, like, but you if mean you click like, on, you mean like that? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So with the um, with the the uh, um, when you select the toggle to say what the source is, uh, this is a new feature that was added in as well, which I don't think I mentioned in my rundown of it, and I'm not sure that it was mentioned in the actual thing either. Uh, but where you say show, and then you're going to select the application, there's something underneath which says shape, and you can have it as widescreen, classic, or whatever or you can oh. set it to the primary display aspect. So if you set it to the, the primary display ax aspect, then it will just stick to that particular display. So what you can do though, is you can actually just cr- use the, obviously the crop tool to crop in the oh. edges. The other Got thing you. to watch out for is in system preferences, not system preferences, in uh, Ecamm preferences, there's another thing in the screen sharing tab which is um, add margin when zooming to an app or window. And if you do that, it leaves that, can you see the little extra border just that it's just added in? If I toggle that on and off, uh, sorry to cover us both up, Michael. (laughs) If I toggle that on and off, it puts that extra little border right at the the edge, basically. Uh, So here's another interesting thing. I can't get to the bounding box (laughs) because of, oh, here, I got to it. I had to find a very special place to find it. (laughs) Because the other elements were actually causing overlap. <laughs> Got you. Right. Um, uh, so where was that other thing you showed? The, um, the, so there's one when you actually add the screen share overlay, and then you've got the little pencil shape. icon next to it. Oh, shape. Yeah. And if I pick so if, custom. If you pick custom, you can just literally just drag it to uh, whatever you want, even without cropping, actually. Oh, that's great. Now I... I uh, interesting. Very interesting. Oh, by the way, I did have one last question. Go on. No problem. When, when I was changing tabs while sharing, there was a refresh. It, like, And I thought I remember you having a tip on how to not have the refresh. Uh, so what? sharing browser tabs? Yeah, it would go gray. Like it would blank out when I switched tabs. Ah, oh, that's interesting. Are you in Safari or? Uh, uh, I was sharing Chrome. sharing Chrome. Here, I can uh, share my, let me... Let me switch my camera to my eCam right there. So now you can see that. Uh huh. Twitter API. So watch when I switch tabs here. You see how flash? See that? Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, I've not seen that one before. But then I don't share multi tab on Chrome that much. Let me uh, give that a go. this one uh previous conversation ever say that again i said sorry i was apologizing michael because it's such a nerdy conversation (laughs) (laughs) oh michael michael loves don't worry about it don't worry (laughs) (laughs) right so um i suppose it would help if i had some uh some pages up So it was just when you were clicking between tabs. Yep, you see, you get ah, it there too. Yeah, that's interesting. Right, that's definitely some sort of uh, little bug, isn't it? 
uh, yeah, very strange. That is very strange, yeah. It's almost like once it's actually loaded up, though, it's sort of, um, it's not doing it so much then, is it? It's if I go to a, a new uh, page. Uh, oops, where's that? How did I get to that? Ecamlive.com is for sale. Hang on a minute, if I spell that wrong, <laughs> are we right? Oh, it's because it's Ecam, isn't it? <laughs> it's not Ecam Live. Mm -hmm. uh, they want to snap that up, though, don't they? I, you would think so. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I should maybe I should buy it and put all my channel content on there. There you go. Right. Uh huh. That'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I definitely saw it though. Yeah, that one does it, doesn't it? So uh, there's that just that momentary pause. Yeah, that is weird. They Can fixed. There was a, there was another little bug in the uh, the previous beta, which had just been resolved now. Which was um, sometimes when I'd go to screen sharing, it would actually just uh, shut down the application that I was sharing or minimize it rather. If I was sharing a particular mm. part of the screen and crop in on it, it just sort of minimized the application. It was a bit of a weird one, but uh, yeah, that's all been uh, been fixed. So, <laughs> can I say something? Of course you can. Yes, yeah. Okay, because in in Doc's uh, stream today, he was answering a question on uh, lag of volume and lag of thing, and he explained that you got to remember that what you do on your computer has to go out to the internet and back to you and and out to the other people and that there is he, he said it wasn't really lag it was just the way it yeah works. yeah the, i i get that but this is um what with this particular thing it's actually um it's it's just screen it's sharing the screen of on my computer so it's an ecam screen sharing locally thing that we're talking about where uh, when you flick from one tab to another there's like a it's not actually updating the the ecam so it's all it's all happening on the computer it's not to do with it how long it takes to go out to anybody it's actually just okay. when you but uh when you're when you're doing that and you're looking at the app itself instead of what's coming across to us is it still flickering yeah yeah that's that's where the the thing is so there's like when you when you look at the app and change tabs it's like it's not actually updating the screen sharing. There's a momentary drop between it changing tabs on the on the the computer locally, not not just the stream. Oh, okay. On the computer locally, it's yeah. There's a, oh, okay. Yeah. So it would be the same Sorry. if I was recording a video. That's all right. <laughs> it would be the same if I was uh, recording a video as well. Um, so yeah, it's a bit of a weird one. That it's only it's only small, but. Uh, yeah, people like us. Yeah, you know, I do, a, I do a news show, so I, I went through, you know, like 10 tabs. And so, yeah. you know, there was sort of this, like, persistent delay. And like, I was just like, oh, what is that? Like, yeah, how do I get rid of that? Um, uh -huh. Yeah. Well, no, I know, I know that they recommend we don't use Safari, but I wonder if it does the same thing in Safari. It doesn't do it with uh, Safari because I've just never noticed it. I'll just... I'll just double check, but I'm it's pretty probably because sure the way that Chrome runs each tab is like a process, and yep. maybe it's doing some kind of weird, you know, uh, switch to like the active process that you're using. Yeah. By the way, I will tell you, Alec, I found a, a very interesting trick that I fixed for myself. Uh, okay. I stopped using Gmail in Chrome. Right. I started opening it only in Safari. Uh huh. And literally, my computer stopped crashing and going nuts. Ah, really? Well, you can't expect because Google to get Gmail to work properly in their own browser. You, you would think, <laughs> but a Gmail a Gmail instance um, takes up almost one gig of memory in the browser when it's wow. in Chrome. At That's, least for me. That is right? amazing. Yeah, so, so I was getting like eight hundred plus megabytes per instance. And I have like five or six mail accounts on Gmail that I have to track all day. Right. So I was using up like six gigabytes, literally just uh -huh. keeping those tabs open. So I finally just stopped using it in um, there and I put it in Safari and it works fine. Right. Let's give this a go. I'm now sharing Safari. So let me see when I go to this other tab. Uh, by the way, have you seen the way that they've updated tabs in the recent update with Safari? So now the tabs. Yeah. I don't like to appear. No, I don't like them. There's there's two options to them. You can in uh, I, well also I can't tell which one is the active. I always have this problem when people do these. Which one's the the real one? Yeah. <laughs> right? 
So if you have a look in Safari preferences, there is two different versions of it as well. You can either have them, they call it this compact style where they're all basically in this header strip or you can yeah. change it to separate where they all come down here. I really don't like this one because they just, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't like them where they're down there. Um, so I tend to have it as compact. So then you end up with a sort of blend of the tabs up here and this. But uh, yeah, I'm not, not as keen on oh, that. That's horrible this, too. Yeah, it they're is. both terrible. <laughs> they're both terrible. <laughs> <laughs> that is just the, uh, the the best of them, I think. So it's uh, it's just it's just weird, yeah. But anyway, uh, let me try this. Let's see if I uh, if I switch tabs, do we get a little? Uh, uh, see, yeah, I can see what you mean. It's hard to tell which one's which. Right? Is there going to be a little pause? Let's try. Right? Is it the grey one or is it the dark grey one? <laughs> <laughs> They're, uh, in fact, that, so that's, let me just show you that then, because that's the other thing that I toggled off on this. If I come to uh, Safari preferences again, uh, let me just make this a little bit bigger so you can actually see it. Um, bring it in there. So the other thing is you can have show color in tab bar. So that will show the color mm -hmm. of the, uh, the window that you're looking, um, in the, uh, the tab bar. Hang on, which one was it now? Uh, so, I thought so I had. Oh, I've seen that. So, yeah, it's so very this is bizarre. where it just all blends up from the top. <laughs> and then you do get some things that like pop out. But if I go to a website that's got like yellow on it or something like that, then the whole window will be yellow. So they're trying to make it, you know, look as if it's all kind of, I suppose, immersive or something like that. But it's, um, yeah, it's, I'm not, I'm not too keen on it overall. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't so, stand it. This is horrible. <laughs> it doesn't seem The tab as groups though. are really good, dude, though, by the way. Yeah. So, so where you However, put them all in a folder and, and open them all up at once. Yeah, I make folders. I just have my mail in a folder. It actually makes me more productive because I put away the windows that I don't need to look at. Yeah, um, and you can open. What's up? Matt? I, I open those with the Stream Deck as well. So, uh, like I have a set oh. of browsers that I need open. So then I do that with um, with Keyboard Maestro to basically open a group of uh, windows. Oh, that's cool. That's a good yeah. idea. Now, here's another problem. The, with the tab collections, however, yeah. you can't pin the tabs anymore. <laughs> ah, right, right. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you can duplicate and other stuff, but it has to be in a non tech collection window for you to actually pin it. And I like yes, pinning yeah. them so I know the ones that I don't want to close yeah, versus yeah. the other ones open organically from stuff, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, it didn't seem to be doing. It didn't so seem Safari to be didn't seem to have the with Safari. No, it didn't. It didn't. It does seem to be a Chrome thing, which uh, which sort of doesn't surprise me. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't surprise me at all. Mm -hmm. I, the only thing I really use Chrome for is uh, is YouTube. That does seem to work better in like YouTube Studio. It seems to work better in there. And specifically, actually, not so much YouTube Studio, but uh, TubeBuddy uh, works, uh, yeah, works works better in there. Do, I think. Do, are there even extensions for Safari? I mean, I don't. Um, for for what TubeBuddy extensions you mean? Yeah, or, yeah. I'm I'm not sure. I think in fact maybe that was the reason why I didn't use it. I can't remember. Yeah, it might be just. Uh, By the way, I have heard that stuff. Edge. If you barely use Chrome, uh -huh. Edge is actually a pretty good browser because it has all the Chrome plugins, but it's not. It's better than Chrome. Ah, okay. I'll uh, I'll have a look. Yeah. At that. Yeah. Does Edge work on a Mac? It does. Yeah. It's Chromium. Uh -huh. oh. Same same thing as Chrome, basically, but they've done a better job, apparently, of uh, managing memory and stuff like that. Uh, and Michael's saying that TubeBuddy works in Edge as well, so which I suppose makes sense if it's Chromium, doesn't it? So um, yeah, I think all the plugins basically work, which is great. Right. Uh, oh, hey Matt, great to see you. Uh, oh, and Paul, I didn't notice. Uh, I've not been looking at the comments. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> Paul <laughs> slipped in as well. <laughs> uh, have I figured out the problem with the Amazon shop? So while we're talking about browsers, this was um, uh, Doc dropped a link in to, um, to something on Amazon. And, or, oh no, it was, it was somebody had asked. In fact, it was, uh, I think it was Paul that had asked, can he drop the link in to his, like something on Amazon so that uh, we can go and visit using his link basically. So Doc had got an Amazon storefront set up and he dropped the link into the chat. Uh, and when me and Paul went to it, it opened up in Safari, uh, which was my default browser. It opened up in Safari, but then instead of actually going to the page, it was a blank page, and then it just downloaded a blank page. 
Uh, and I thought it was something to do with uh, like an ad blocker or because it said Safari, if you look in the little shield symbol at the top. It Safari said, is like the ultimate ad blocker. It blocks all yeah. privacy information. <laughs> like, so. Yeah. so it had, it did say that it had dropped, uh, blocked doubleclick.net, which would make sense if it, there was some uh, sort of linking going through there. But I went into Safari and turned off all of my uh, sort of s settings in related to privacy, ad blocking and all that sort of stuff and tried to link again. And it still didn't work. So um, whereas some of the other Amazon links, like a direct Amazon link would work. So... I don't know if it was something to do if he'd got a bit of a uh, a sort of funky redirect link because the link that he gave was basically uh, was it Doc Rock? Oh, was it his Bradley link or whatever? That Maybe thing was yeah, it was it was Doc Rock dot live slash. If it was a Doc Rock like one, yeah, then he's using another redirector, which maybe yeah. is eating the yeah some of the params. Yeah. Whereas when, if he just dropped in his actual Amazon link, then we could just get straight to it. So I think it is something to do with that, Paul. But uh, yeah. I, uh, I did as much as I could do on my end <laughs> and I couldn't figure it out any further than that. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's what I got. So Safari downloaded a blank page and Chrome goes to just a blank page. Uh, so very strange that is. Yeah, I think he needs to uh, look into it from his side. <laughs> but he, he seemed to be able to click on it and it worked fine. But then I guess it would do for him, wouldn't it? Because it's, uh, it's his link. So... <laughs> So, uh, yeah, uh, Matt is saying that his power was down and the generator didn't start. Well, uh, it's good that you've got a generator, though. <laughs> I sometimes, we have a, we've had a few power outages here recently, and I've uh, been thinking I, I need to uh, get some sort of proper backup. Although I've got a UPS for the computer, obviously, but, uh, yeah, not enough for the whole, <laughs> whole house or anything. And uh, I think they're out of lockdown in uh, Vietnam, where Matt is now as well. So that's got to be a bit of a relief. <laughs> We've uh, we're not in lockdown in uh, in Thailand, but there's a few more restrictions coming in. There's been a sort of increase of cases over the past few months, but it's all flattening off now. So uh, it's looking uh, looking good, I think. Let's hope so. Yeah, we'll get there in the end. <laughs> oh, and congratulations, um, Greg, on your zealous stream that you did. It was oh, uh, thanks. Really, it was a really cool watch that was. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, you know, we did all that in the browser. No ecamm. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. um, so yeah, I, I was pretty psyched. There's obviously some challenges and issues to sort out still, but I was pretty excited because, uh, you know, that guy's a is a venture capitalist. He's yeah, an old yeah. friend of ours. Um, uh -huh. You know, I was hoping. You know, I hope he could maybe be an investor someday in Zealous itself. So yeah. Um, you saw the part where we had like eight people. Yeah. Up. Yeah. It's all yeah. dynamic. You don't have to figure out where to put anyone or any of the stuff. Yes, yeah, yeah. It was a uh, it was a great demo. If you if you're going to do a demo for a venture capitalist, then it's nice <laughs> when it all goes right, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So we did find some bugs. Um, right. What the main bug is that um, it was only pulling 320 from everybody, uh -huh. so the quality was not as good as it could have be could be. So. We found, I think we found why that bug is happening. Um, right. So now we're pulling, we're going to pull at 720 and then we'll degrade uh, instead of trying to upgrade. Um, right. So that's the main thing, just to get the composition a little higher quality. But I don't know if you saw, we got the comments, uh, the Q&As to come up now. So yep. with that, we'll start to be able to layer in other things. Right, right. right. So uh, we'll have banners like they have in Restream and StreamYard and We'll have multiple styles, um, uh -huh. and configurable colors, and all this other stuff. Yeah. Uh -huh. The the other thing I liked of yours this week <laughs> was your uh, thing on Twitter with the uh, about the creator economy. I thought that little graphic you did was brilliant. Oh, the thread. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. That 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 it just sort of uh, crystallized a load of different things. Really. I'll, let me see if I can grab that quickly because it was. Uh, I thought that was brilliant. Uh. And it's good that yeah, see so you see you got the uh, the enthusiasm economy in there as well from uh, Heather. From Heather, yeah. Uh, so you, I don't know if you, you remember when we had Heather on originally. Uh -huh. That's how long ago I started working on that, but I just hadn't right, had right. time to uh -huh. <laughs> to document it. I'm glad it's helpful though because I you know it's it's not meant to to limit folks. I think it's just trying to let us have a kind of better conversation about what's going on. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's just uh, it just sort of puts things into context. I thought really well. Uh, let me see if we can get this to the top. There we go. Uh, 
it's see quite good to did, be able to just do this. We did this in Zealous. We, we would be just automatically sitting on top of this image. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That is one of the limitations when you've got all these scenes set up and you just want to drop a little image in. So, uh, yeah, I just thought this was a, I, li I like things like this that they appeal to my visual mind. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. It, you know, they say like um, there's a lot of these po folks that are like these analysts or strategist types and whatnot. But the reason people pay attention to them is if they can do visualize it well. Right. Yes. Like, yeah. If, yeah. If you can't somehow figure out how to visualize it, then you failed. Yeah. So, yeah, the creator economy, enthusiasm economy, expert economy and influence economy. Uh, it's just brilliant. <laughs> the simple ideas often are, aren't they? <laughs> well, I say simple. Obviously, I'm sure it took a while to get to it, but it's, I, uh, I had done four other variations before um, this. You know what they say? The hardest thing is the axes, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, what's the, when you do a two by two grid, it's always like, what are the two dimensions that are the most useful for dissecting and separating yeah. sort of the contents, right? Cause you could put, there's a hundred things you could put on those axes. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. I thought that was uh, that was great. Great, uh, great thread as well in, uh, in Twitter. Uh, that was the other thing I didn't mention, by the way, my uh, Twitter Tweet 100 challenge, oh, yeah. well, that which going? I'm still doing. It's going good. Uh, to be honest with you, I have missed, I missed yesterday, I think, uh, for whatever reason, but it's... Uh, I thought you had worth... a cannon, a machine gun of tweets lined up already. <laughs> I did, and then it ran out, and I just hadn't got around to doing it. So the past <laughs> the past few days, I've done it. And then once my automation failed, or my automation failed twice, I think once it didn't fail, but it was that there was something to do with the timing. I basically got two out uh, in a day based on when they were measuring it or something like that. So, um, uh, yeah, so now I'm down to manually doing them again until I just get another load up. But <laughs> it's, it's, it's still been a success because part of the reason I wanted to do it was just to be a bit more active on Twitter rather than just automating my posts going out to it. So I have been... All right, on, I, I on will Twitter. give you a tip, Alec, on how to, yep. how to do this now because um, mm -hmm. I'm about to do this also. Make a list of 30 tips for something. All right, right. right. And then here's what's cool. Record a short for each one. That is a cool right? idea because that's something else I need to get back into, isn't it? The shorts. Yeah. So <laughs> you have, you can do 30 tips, like, um, like even in here for like the live community, macro community, yeah, yeah. even like if you're like, Hey, did you know this is a keyboard shortcut? Right. Um, mm -hmm. like if you hit this, it'll do this. Right. But you literally do 30 of them and just record them on one shot. Yeah. 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 I'm doing that. You know that I'm doing that now. <laughs> and also a tweet with video is going to do better. So now you can take your video off yep. and attach it into your tweet and then you can get even better performance out of it. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Greg. You give me all the best ideas. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm a correspondent for my friend's show and this is the same thing I just came up with for him because right. I, I talk about entrepreneurship. So I was like, I'm just going to make a list of 50 things uh -huh. and I'm just going to literally just blab off you know, 30 second videos for each one or minute long videos riffing on uh -huh. each of those little ideas. Right, right. Uh, just catching up with some of these comments. Paul saying that that uh, link thing with um, uh, Doc does oh. work on the iPad. Uh, Eileen had the same issue. Uh, and also the, oh, her dot live link isn't working. And my link works with HTTP and not HTTPS. That's interesting you say that, Eileen, because uh. before the link that I have down here, because I got my dot .live, and so I last um, last few weeks, I've always had take one tech dot .live slash join. And then it was actually um, Michael from the UK in the chat. Um, he tried the link and it was getting blocked by his um, ISP. Uh, yeah, uh, and that was because of the, it, the HTTPS didn't work. So, um, yeah. In general, uh, yeah. everyone should just use HTTPS. Don't even bother using HTTPS. Yeah. Uh huh. So, uh, I, oh, so you've tried. So we're, Matt's tried uh, Zealous, but did a trial of Zealous. Oh, he, I see. He couldn't join your stream, but he's done a trial. Yeah, of he couldn't join that one. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. Yeah, I made that video into my demo video now for investors. So. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. Well, it's a great, great demo, isn't it? <laughs> well, next next um, week will be even better because the quality will be better, more improved. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Uh, um, he does, doesn't he? Greg always has great tips. <laughs> <laughs> lists, they work. Look at BuzzFeed. They built a whole yeah. business on lists, right? Totally, yeah. Not, well, not my idea. So I think if you just make a good list and 
you know, you like your brain knows these things. It's when you try to find a good idea that you're going to have a harder time. If you're just like yeah, make a you. list, you can make a list really fast. Yes. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. <laughs> but the second you're like trying to find a tweet, forget it. You, it's going to be like work. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So just pick a context and just give yourself like, all right, uh, list 10 things, 10 things you didn't know about Ecamm. Right. And boom, yeah, yeah. like you're done. You'll have 10 uh -huh. in five, you know, in five seconds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that is, that is a great idea for the shorts as well. So, uh, yeah, I've, I have got my shorts YouTube channel, but I've not uh, not done any more with that. But I plan to get that. up. Yeah. Well, well, and really also you get that little there. record button on the stream deck. So it's super easy. Record, yeah, stop, yeah. record, stop. Right? Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So who, who have you got lined up in terms of guests on your thing coming up? We are booked through uh, December 15th fif oh, cool. is our next opening. Yeah. Oh, sweet, so sweet. Uh -huh. next week we have a guy named Justin Moore. He's uh, the creator oh, yeah. wizard. Um, right. So he's going to be on the show with another VC, a venture capitalist that I used to work with. Uh -huh. um, then I think we have my friend Goldie Han, or Goldie Chan, sorry. Uh -huh. um, she's going to be on the week after that. Um, we've got a number of people coming. Um, yeah, uh, our guest list, uh, we've been very good at getting that part done. Like we've, we filled it up all the way through. Um, let me just see who I have on it. Who else I have uh, coming up? Uh, we get a lot of founders. So yeah, we have Goldie. Then we have Joe Hur Hurricane from Issue. We've got Amber Case from Unlock Protocol, which is like a blockchain uh -huh. membership thing. We've got Peter Shankman, uh, very well-known, famous uh, PR yeah person um john allen from lava social we have mr tom buck on november 10th oh. you know you've made it when tom comes on your stream <laughs> yeah and then um paul backus which is a uh, oh, another yeah. guy at google web creators he'll be on uh -huh. november 17th then we have a week off for thanksgiving then we have a week off for my anniversary then we're back with jen lee from the means of creation discord and then one last holiday thing i think on the 15th right right and uh, yeah. so are you going to do those like all going forward with zealous and having like the q a and stuff like that as well or that's the goal the goal because um so the way we used to do our show was that we would have the main show record and then we would stop and switch to zealous for the mm -hmm. after show but yeah, right. you know you lose people in that transition yeah um you know and also like you know some folks can do it and also it doesn't it doesn't speak to like how I think a good live stream goes. Like, I think you, this demonstrates it, like bringing voices in and, and getting the questions into it and being dynamic, I think is ultimately like, otherwise you may as well just play a video, right? Like right, what's right. the point of being here if you can't react to yes, sort of yeah. the, the audience and what's going on. So uh -huh. that's why I think Zealous is just more powerful because yep. um, you probably didn't get to see this, but on the Zealous pages that we create for the event, there's a question block that you can add to every page. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So be ahead of time, like yes, half those yeah. questions were actually already asked before got, we yeah. got in. Yeah. And so then when I'm looking in the, in the admin, I can see all the questions that have already come in. Plus people can ask questions in real time. Mm -hmm. So you know how doc does Q in front. You don't need to do that. We have a tab for it. Got you yeah. type the yeah, question yeah. in and it'll just show up if there's a question. Uh -huh. But what's cool is it shows presence. So it'll be like, oh, Alec asked this question and he's here right now. So I can ping you and bring you on stage to ask your question. Yes. Yeah. Got you. Yeah, that's great. Uh, Eileen's got a guest request. <laughs> uh -huh. Can you get the host, the creator up? I would love to get the creator upload folks on. Uh, I will. How about this? I will reach out to them. Um, I listen to their show. I love their content. Like, uh, I love the way they, I, 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 I aspire to be as polished as they are, um, <laughs> in, in their, in their, uh, repertoire. Um, but you know, we're, um, I did the show today by myself actually, cause Ken was feeling sick. So that's why oh, right. I was able to, I was able to produce it all. And I did it in 30 minutes and we covered like 10 news stories. So mm -hmm. I think, uh, you know, it was good. Um, but yeah, I'd love to get them uh the creator upload folks on um it is interesting by the way another tip for everyone out there the more you put this content out there the more you get invited to other things like right. i got invited to like three other podcasts 
uh-huh. to come talk about stuff. Uh, also from my tweet storm. So that's why I'm right, also right. recommending you put your, your hundred tips out there so that Got other you. people yeah, will find yeah. uh-huh. And then all 17 of my followers will be, uh, banging at my door <laughs> i will retweet all of yours i have like eight thousand followers on twitter if that's if that if i can use that to help you grow i will uh eileen says lauren from jelly smack i've never heard of that what is what is that? oh okay do you know what there's so many we, uh, the sea is infinite in this space it's um there's so many great people that we we haven't even had time to uh-huh. I, the, what, what, my only problem is i only have one guest a week <laughs> Have you heard of Jelly Smack? What is that? Yeah. Uh, oh, the crazy I mean, you should be up here me. talking to us. It's a tool. Yeah. Uh-huh. Ah, cool, cool. What, what for? Um, what for video is that? Or I, I believe it's for video. Yeah. Uh, ah, I see. Jelly Smack helps video creators and brands grow their audience and maximize their revenue across social platforms. Ah, never heard of it. I'll, uh, I'll give it a look. <laughs> I'm obviously out of the loop. <laughs> uh, oh, do you see that one from um, Matt, by the way? Uh, Greg, recommendation, send an automatic reminder before the show. I thought you mentioned that. Uh, we do. Uh, we may not. I will check. But yes, we already have your email. And so we already mail out a calendar invite. Auto- so every time you set up a new event, you'll automatically get an email with the iCal invite in it, basically. So it'll go into your calendar. Mm-hmm. Um we do need to do a reminder. Yes. I will oh, make cool. sure we get that in. Uh, Jelly Smack is like an agency. I get you. So they actually do They're it. Global creators cool. themselves. Yeah. Got you. Got you. Cool. So what have you got uh, coming up for the week ahead, both of you? And try to survive tomorrow. Trying to survive. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll get you. <laughs> 100 mile r- bike ride and then nothing for six days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Matt, I, we may not have sent the reminder email. I will I will make a note of it, though, to make sure we do it. Uh, and how what about you, Michael? Your, oh, sorry. Go on. I'm to try and do my first live stream on YouTube. And, uh, but I wanted to know what is the uh, YouTube site for your shorts? For, for mine, uh, yeah, it yes. is uh, Take One Tech Shorts, but I haven't actually, it hasn't got its own name, so it's like a URL link, but I'll, uh, uh, I've will i literally just created the account and added some stuff in, like uh, the graphics and things like that, but um, I've not actually posted any yet, so I'll uh, I'll send you a link as soon as I do, though. <laughs> There's not, okay, there how, many, how many people do you need to before you can rename it, Alec? I, I can't remember, actually. Um, I, I always thought that it was a higher number than it was, but then just one day I went in and I thought, oh, I can just do it. So I, I don't know. I don't know if it's about a, the amount of time because I know you, Michael, you've got Wrinkle City uh, like from before you had subscribers as such because you just like had that. I think it might be to do with the, the amount of time you've had the the um, the account perhaps. I'm not sure. Uh, I don't know. Definitely just Definitely just go in and have a little look. And that is basically in... Where is it? Customization in the YouTube and then in branding, uh, not branding tab, it's in our oh, basic info. And so there's a channel URL and then there's also a custom URL. And that that custom URL just appeared for me at some point and it wasn't there when I set up the channel, but then it just- Where is that? There. Where do you go? Uh, into uh, customization. Let me just come over to this one a minute. Is this going to work? YouTube, let me see if- I So uh, I'm, in, uh, if I'm in YouTube studio. Then uh, down on the left-hand side in the customization. Oh, yeah. And then in basic info, it starts with this channel URL, which you can't actually edit. Uh, but then down beneath that, this one just sort of appeared for me, this custom URL. But yeah, I'm not sure of the criteria for you to actually be able to do that. It wasn't in there when I started. Uh, I know that much. Yeah, but then it just I, appeared. I can't change mine yet. <laughs> right, right. Let's see. <laughs> But it's, it's weird because, like I say, Michael, you've got your own custom URL, so I don't know. Ah, a hundred subscribers. Point. Yeah, but Ma- Michael's not got a hundred, and yet he's uh, got no. city, So I don't know. I don't know how that happened. Uh, it says uh, um, to create a custom URL for your channel, your account needs to have one hundred or more subscribers, be at least thirty days old, have uploaded a profile picture, have uploaded a banner image. Ah. You can check if you're claimed a URL in your basic info settings. Right, right. You must have just got lucky. Oh, Michael. 
There is also yeah. a legacy username URL, maybe, but. Ah, that might be it if you'd had it a while ago, perhaps. You're a legacy, Michael. Yeah, I've been around a while. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're at uh, 76 or so, so we're probably, we're getting close to 100. Getting close. I'll uh, I'll go and subscribe yeah. on my other my other YouTube uh, account. Please do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got like f technically, I suppose it's technically five because I've got you could like sign on the YouTube Shorts channel, sign with Take One Tech, sign with mine, and then I've got another like set oh, of YouTube accounts as well. So you're right. On my drop down, when I switch account, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I got ten. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> go and subscribe to all of those, and yeah. then uh, there you go. Uh, oh, hello! I've just got to say hello to Todd. Just popped in. Uh, Christmas clatter. I love this idea for a YouTube channel, by the way. So Todd's channel is all just about Christmas stuff, but it's oh, all year awesome. round. So it's like every, Christmas all year round. What more do you want? <laughs> yeah, that saying five o'clock. It's got to be Christmas somewhere. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, cool. <laughs> Uh, ah, that's interesting. Awesome. Was Michael's a personal, not a branded account? Ah, does that make it? Does that make a difference? Ah, uh, do you can do streaming through your personal account also? Yes. Right. So perhaps that's what it is then. Maybe. Uh, or if you had Google Plus, uh, it's just so complicated, isn't it? There's lots of ways uh, around it. I still haven't got to the bottom of that thing that I mentioned on my stream last week, by the way, where my YouTube Shorts has got some different options in terms of when it's talking about the. Uh, uh, in the settings, uh, I showed on the, where was it? The channel settings and then the feature el eligibility. So the feature eligibility on this one, uh, basically it's just got these two things, default features and feature that require phone verification. So I've only got these two things, but if I go into my, uh, shorts channel, uh, then it's got basically, uh, where is it? Uh, this one, uh, it's got different settings. So in here, in the settings, and then in the channel, feature eligibility. Ah, uh, oh, this one's changed. <laughs> That's interesting. When I did my live stream last week or the week before, this one had uh, three different options in it, and it said basic, intermediate, and advanced. So uh, that solved that problem. <laughs> I wonder why that was then. It just had a completely different set of features in here uh, when I... Uh, looked at it on my live stream that time so i don't know oh, you know uh, what i wish you could do is make embedding un and enabled by default which you cannot well that is what it said on so on my youtube shorts this was the reason why i uh, i raised it on my, my stream two weeks ago or last week or whatever because um in that one in the advanced features which it said i had access to if i submitted a uh, a photo of my uh, id basically which i did um, it said that you would then be allowed to embed on uh, like a website or whatever for lives. So you can embed lives on a website. Uh, and that was oh, the, the difference. That was the advanced feature. Uh, but having just gone into it now, it's, uh, it's gone. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so <laughs> yeah, oh, interesting. Boy. All right, gentlemen. Cool. I'm going to go car start carb loading for tomorrow. So. <laughs> yeah. Good luck with it. I'll be uh, I'll be thinking about you. I'll be there with you in spirit. I'll, I'll, I'll share a picture at some point tomorrow. Uh, uh -huh. So everyone have a wonderful weekend and uh, we will we will see you soon. I'm sure. Cool. Alec, always great. a pleasure. Michael, great to meet you. Yeah, Thank you. Great to see you, Greg. <laughs> you bet. Cool stuff. Bye bye. Guys. Bye bye. Bye. And uh, yeah, I think it's about time for me to get ready to get my uh, my little son. I've heard the little pitter patter of footsteps upstairs. So, uh, or rather, the big <laughs> bang of them jumping down the stairs. <laughs> so, I'm going to uh, wrap it up as well. But it's really great to speak to you, Michael, because it's uh, I always enjoy our videos back and forth. But it's uh, it's great to actually be able to properly chat. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it is yeah. for me too. Uh huh. Yeah, I really enjoy. Can you it. answer one quick question? Of course, I can. Yeah. I'm I'm watching the uh, screen and my video on the screen is way behind what I'm doing. Uh, that will be the delay thing that, um, that um, uh, uh, Doc was talking about. So to your, your thing is coming like all the way back to me and then back to you again. So there will be that delay. You're, you're perhaps, seeing, um, perhaps seeing the delay of the feed. I, when you say what you're watching on the screen, do you mean in the, the Ecamm window where you've logged into this? Or you mean on the yeah the YouTube yeah, yeah. I'm I'm you're you're live you're live where I see you and I and 
Right, right. Uh, but I think it's not a... lagged on your end. No, no, no. It looks uh, it's fine. You know, I'm hearing your responses straight away. So okay. I think that's just yeah. Because right. uh, see, like yeah. right now, I'm putting up one finger and taking it down, but <laughs> on my TV, on my screen, my finger was down before it went up on the picture. Ah, right, right. Yeah, yeah. I think I think I've had that before when I've been on in other people's streams as well. So uh, yeah, I think that's just the fact that it's coming here first and then it's being returned back. It's that sort of sort of lag thing. Uh, and saying, also, when I when I look at the comments, I don't have any way of responding to some of them uh, when we're on live like this. I can't type I, a comment. Yeah, it would have to be in the. Uh, you'd have to do it actually in a separate browser in YouTube now. In normally, if you stream to one place, then you get the little comment uh, re reply box on Ecamm Live. So for for me as the host, like if I was just streaming to YouTube, I'd be able to drop a reply into the comments. But when you're going to restream, it sort of takes that box away because you wouldn't want to be just replying to comments where, you know, there wasn't any context to it necessarily obviously people are on the stream yeah. but it would have to yeah. then post those comments in all different places so it seems that when you use restream you don't have that reply function so if i wanted to type something in the chat i'd have to have the uh the youtube window open or whichever window it was but to do that okay now well uh, yeah. thanks so much for having me on i've really enjoyed oh, being on with you anytime and, michael uh, anytime okay and, and i uh, hope yeah, i look, didn't take up somebody's space Oh, there's look look at this. Look how prepared I am. If, if there'd been four people, I've got four. And if there had been oh oh okay, if there'd been more, look at this. I've even got that one ready. <laughs> so oh okay, I am fully prepared. <laughs> oh, all right, fine. I didn't realize because so, um, what what day was your stream, by the way? Just so that I know, I'll I'll send you an email and let you know, and I'll post it okay. in the VIP group. Brilliant. Brilliant. I'm not Great I'm stuff. not sure yet. I I have to get all my stuff together and give it a run. Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> uh, okay. Great stuff. Take care, Alex. Thank, Thank you so much. much, Michael. I'll see you again soon. Cheers. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs> uh, right, I'll just say hello to Noel uh, from uh, Puerto Rico. It's great to uh, see you. That's one thing I've loved about uh, this whole YouTube thing, by the way, is just the fact of being connected. You know, we've got people all over the place. There's me here, people in the UK on the stream and now Puerto Rico as well and the US obviously and it's just like a global community isn't it and it's uh, just full of great people I absolutely love it <laughs> so uh, yeah it's been uh, it's been great to uh, see you all to, uh, today on here and uh, some familiar faces and some new ones as well so uh, yeah thanks all for stopping by and uh, I'm going to just go to my usual ending screen I, I will get around to I, I say this I've said this for the past five uh, live streams <laughs> that I'll get around to at some point making a proper ending for just the live stream but in the meantime I'm just going to go to my usual YouTube end screen so thanks again everyone I hope you all have an absolutely wonderful day uh, and I'll see you all again very soon <laughs> have a great day bye bye